In this video, we'll continue on with intervals and we'll discuss fourths and fifths. The numeric part for fourths and fifths is pretty simple because all we have to do is count lines and spaces. It doesn't matter what the clef is as long as we're on the staff. Here's a fourth. I'm starting from the note that I'm on over here, so this is a space. One, two, three, four. That's a fourth of some type. And here's a fifth. One, two, three, four, five. That's a fifth. So we have a fourth and a fifth. These, by the way, you can start getting fast at them by just recognizing, okay, I'm going from a space and I'm skipping another space and going to another space. Or from a line, another line, and another line, right? If you went from a space to a space or a line to a line, you'd always get a third. If you go one more, you'll always get a fifth. So hopefully this part is easy. It's just a matter of counting to get a fourth or a fifth. But what changes here is the quality. With seconds and thirds, we had minor and major, and that was nice because it was consistent. But with fourths and fifths, we go on to a different system where we have these three words. I'll put them over here. Diminished. Abbreviated with a little degree sign. Perfect. Abbreviated with a P. And augmented. Abbreviated with a plus sign. We're no longer using major and minor when we talk about fourths and fifths. And there is a really neat reason for that. It has to do with intonation, but for the sake of not confusing anyone, I'm not going to talk about that in this video. Maybe some point down the road, I'll talk about what makes perfect intervals perfect. All right, let's make a clef. I'll do treble clef. And I'm going to start off with a perfect fourth. Now the four part should be easy. You can count one, two, three, four. What makes it a perfect fourth? Well, it's basically half a step bigger than a major third. Take a look at my keyboard over here. Pretend I started from F and I went up a major third. A major third up from F would be A. And one half step bigger than that is B flat. So from F to B flat is a perfect fourth. I'll abbreviate that by saying P4. Now, if I went a half step above that and it was still a fourth, in other words, this is now B natural. Now I have an augmented fourth. Think about it this way, augment means to make something bigger, right? So I'm taking something that's perfect and I'm making it too big, now it's augmented. It's an augmented fourth. That would be from F to B. Now, if I go from F all the way to C, now I've got a perfect fifth. We're going to do a video where we'll just practice these. This one is just to explain the concept. Another one will be to practice these. But for right now, I have my fourths. These are the only two fourths I'm going to use. Yes, there is something like a diminished fourth, but we're not going to use it um, for simple theory like this. So we have a perfect fourth and an augmented fourth. We have our perfect fifth. Hopefully you get the fifth easily by going one, two, three, four, five, or you could do like what I was saying before, skip from space to space to space, that's a fifth. And this is a perfect fifth, it's a half step bigger. All of these are in order. So this is a half step bigger than a major third. This is a half step bigger than a perfect fourth. This is a half step bigger than an augmented fourth. They're all in order. Now I have to do one thing which is going to really feel confusing and just apologize for it in advance. This is one of the trickier things with intervals. In between this interval and this interval, we left one out and I'll draw it right here. From C, sorry, from F rather, to C flat. Now this is a fifth again, right? They're both going from an F something to an F something, so they're both fifths. But this is smaller than a perfect fifth. This is a diminished fifth. Remember I used the degree sign for the diminished, the P for the perfects, and the plus sign for the augmented. This is a diminished fifth. Why is this confusing? 
because let's take a look at our keyboard. From F to B flat was my perfect fourth. From F to B was my augmented fourth. From F to C was my perfect fifth. From F to C flat is a diminished fifth. F to C flat sounds exactly the same as F to B. They're spelled differently. So one of these is a fourth, the F to B, and one of these is a fifth, the F to C flat. When we're talking about this type of interval, it's not enough to see how it's played on a piano. We actually have to know what the letter names are. We have to know how it's what we would call spelled because it makes a difference if it's a fourth or a fifth. And these two intervals, this is the last one thing that you have to remember about this, have a special name called a tritone. Why is it called a tritone? Well, let's take a look at a bigger image of a keyboard here. Here's another tritone from C, to F sharp. Think about that. The perfect fourth would be from C to F. The perfect fifth would be from C to G. The tritone is in between those from C to F sharp. I could call it a perfect, uh, I'd rather call it augmented fourth if I'm going from C to F sharp or diminished fifth if I'm going from C to G flat. I'm going to explain that one more time because it's a little confusing, and this time I'll write it out on the staff as well. I'll use a bass clef this time. The first example I showed you was C to F. That's a perfect fourth. It's a fourth apart, one, two, three, four, and it's perfect. It's a half step bigger than a major third. That's a perfect fourth. Now this time I'm going to leave a bunch of space, and I'm going to write the other one here. If I went from C to G, that's a perfect fifth. C to G, C to G. Why is it a perfect fifth? Well, it's a fifth because I'm going one, two, three, four, five, or I'm skipping from space to space to space. That's another way to think about it. It's a perfect fifth. Why is it perfect? Well, it's a whole step bigger than this. In between here is the tritone, right? What's in between a perfect fourth and a perfect fifth? The tritone. In other words, here's my perfect fourth again, C to F. My perfect fifth is C to G. And in between C to this black key, whatever I call it, is called a tritone. Here's why it's called a tritone. It's one, two, three tones, or three whole steps, right? I'll do that again. C to D is a whole step. D to E is a whole step, E to F sharp is a whole step. That's three whole steps or three tones, tritone. You don't really need to know the explanation if you don't want to, but it might help just to remember that that interval is called generically a tritone. What's nice about the, using the word tritone is it doesn't tell you if it's a fourth or fifth. Why is that important? Well, when we're doing ear training and you're just listening to something, there's no way to know if you're talking about an augmented fourth or diminished fifth you could describe it as a tritone because it could be either. It's impossible to know with your ears alone. You would have to know which way it's spelled. And here's why. I could call that interval a C to an F sharp, or I could call it a C to a G flat, right? F sharp and G flat are enharmonic equivalents. They're the same note on the piano. If I call it C to an F sharp, it's an augmented fourth. And if I call it C to a G flat, it's a diminished fifth. But they have the exact same sound. In the next video, we're going to do practice where you'll have to identify, is this a perfect fourth, an augmented fourth, a perfect fifth, or diminished fifth? But if any of that is confusing, as it often is for many people when they're first learning this concept, feel free to watch this video another time or two before you really get the concept, and then go ahead and move on to some of the practice examples in the next video. If you found that video helpful, please click the subscribe button below to find more videos just like it.